Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today has been on before. She's formerly a doctor at one of my favorite places on Earth, the True North Health Center, and she is making recipes using my very favorite ingredient, not just sweet potatoes, but Japanese sweet potatoes. And there's going to be a Sunday happening, people. Please welcome back to the show, Dr. Stephanie P. Peacock, it's great to see you again. You look amazing. Oh, thank you, Chef AJ. You do too. It's the power of plants, right? <laughs> and the power of plants and the power of sweet potatoes, because yeah. <laughs> I feel so bad for people that only know of sweet potatoes as the orange sweet potatoes. And while orange sweet potatoes certainly are good, man, until you start trying the other ones like the Japanese and the Murasaki and the ones that are white, you, you just haven't lived. I completely agree. I actually, I don't think I've used an orange sweet potato in years, like since probably like probably about three years now, I've just been using either like the Hannah yams or the Japanese sweet potatoes or the Murasaki because they're just so sweet and so much more full of flavor, which is why I have three different ingredients that I'm going to show all the viewers today about. So um, the three different um, recipes are going to be, I'm making cookies with them and they're, they're just four ingredient oat cookies. They're so good. And then I'm also making French toast with them. And instead of using bread for French toast, I'm using the potatoes and heating them up so that they get nice and crispy and they're just like French toast. And then the third, in, uh, sorry, the third recipe is going to be a banana split that I'm using. And Seriously, all the ingredients require like five ingredients or less. So it's just super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with the French toast just because it kind of takes a little time to bake it. So, so I'm just going to start with saying that for all the, for all the recipes using the Japanese sweet potato, um, I already prepped them ahead of time because I like to cook them in the oven just because roasting them brings out a lot of the delicious flavor. It really caramelizes it. So I actually baked them yesterday, but I baked two big Japanese sweet potatoes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour and 20 ish minutes. And I turned the oven off and I kind of let them sit in the oven just for a little bit longer, just to kind of roast up a little bit more. And then I just put them in the fridge overnight and then they're ready to go. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that's what I do right now. So we're not spending an hour here just baking sweet potatoes, but so here, I actually cut one of them in half here. So this is what it looks like after you've cut it up and then it's been in the fridge and it's just been sitting overnight. It firms up really well. And another real reason real quick that I wanted to mention that I do bake them and then I let them cool completely is something called starch retrogradation, which basically allows a lot of the beneficial structures to rebuild. And then you're getting a lot of the amazing components and healing structures that are in sweet potatoes that are so good for your gut and like overall health. So Anyways, that's what I love to do with the potatoes. But essentially what I do with this is I will take off the skin and then I will just cut it lengthwise. And then I will cut perpendicular to that to make nice little squares that are about an inch uh, thick. And so I'll show you guys right now, just to save time, I didn't um, wanna cut it up in front of you guys. But here, this is what they look like after you've just kind of cut them up. And you can see here, I mean, they're pretty nice and firm and they're, they've already been cooked but we're gonna actually reheat these in an air fryer, or you could use an oven if you don't have an air fryer, but I love my air fryer just because it cooks things a lot faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the air fryer at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about like 12 to 15 minutes. And that will just allow these to kind of brown up and crisp up and it's gonna be so good. Um, but the ingredients for this, what I'm using is the Japanese sweet potato, obviously. And then I'm going to use some date syrup to sweeten it up and then some fresh berries and then some cinnamon. And seriously, it, it tastes better than French toast than well, what we're used to eating, you know, growing up and everything. So I have my air fryer right here. I'm just going to put these in real quick and have those going. And then I will make the other recipes for you guys. So then these love your outfit. What, the, is it called a romper? I love what you're wearing. Oh my gosh, thank you. I like, I just got it actually. And I was like, oh, this will be perfect for the show because it's all nice and summery here, right? So um, yes, it's a romper. I got it from um, this new online store I just discovered. It's called Up West and they make a lot of their um, clothing just from like cotton. And so uh, yeah, and that's like the only ingredient in their clothes. So I really love it. Okay, so setting it to about a little over about 12-ish minutes. So I'm just gonna let that kind of, and this is my giant air fryer. I think I had it on the show last time, but 
if you can see it right there, it's just right there. It's, um, it's called the big boss. I really like it because I can, I can actually roast full sweet potatoes in there too. I just, it's amazing. So, um, okay. So those are the French toast that is cooking up right now. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the oat cookies, which is my personal favorite too. So, all right. So you're going to just need a nice mixing bowl for the, for mixing all the ingredients together. And there's only four ingredients in this recipe. So it's going to be oat flour, date syrup. Um, you can add in some cinnamon if you want, but then obviously Japanese sweet potato and then um, a plant milk. So the plant milk that I'm using today, I'm actually using an organic soy milk, the only ingredients, water and soybeans. It really just depends on what you have in your fridge. Sometimes I use almond milk or cashew milk or whatever, if I make it homemade too. But anyways, so here is the oat flour right in through here. So I make my own oat flour because it's just so easy. So all you have to do is just blend some whole oats into a blender. And then you just need to blend it for like a minute or two. And then you're just going to make a nice fine flour, which is really convenient. So got the oat flour in here. And then you're going to use my favorite ingredient, just some, like I use about a cup of mashed sweet potato. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, I use a cup of the oat flour as well. So a cup of oat flour, a cup of mashed Japanese sweet potato. It's so sweet, especially after you've roasted it. So you really don't like, I mean, you almost don't even need the date syrup that's in this recipe, <laughs> but yeah, you know, they're I, so sweet. They are so sweet. They're like eating cake, you know? I yeah, no, it's, be, it's better than cake. Like I, my birthday is in a couple days and my husband was asking me, he, he likes to bake me something for my birthday. He's like, what do you want? I'm like, honestly, I could seriously be okay with just like ro roasting up a Japanese sweet potato and just like sticking some candles in it because, and I'm not even exaggerating. I love those. So, and then here I have, I just in here, I have, um, you can see the milk in there. It's just a fourth of a cup of plant milk. You know, I use about a fourth of a cup. Sometimes depends on maybe like how creamy or thick you want your cookies, but, um, you can maybe do a half of a cup of plant milk here. So I just put the plant milk in there. And then my other favorite ingredient, and I know you love this too, is just being able to use dates to sweeten anything up as well, because you're still getting the beneficial fiber with it. And I just, I always, I always have this like ready and prepped in my fridge. Anyways, I made some of this last night and I'll just stick it in a jar and it stays good for a long time. But, um, you just really need to blend a cup of dates with a cup of filtered water and you make the best date paste ever. So I'm just going to mix a fourth of a cup of the date, um, paste into here real quick. I'm just going to measure it out and then, and with this, with the Japanese sweet potato seriously makes the sweetest cookie. And my clients love this recipe because you are getting so many nutrients with it and you're satisfying your sweet tooth. And on top of that, you're not getting that like dopamine rush with all the cane sugar and all the other processed, I don't know, cookies and treats that are out there on the market right now. So you're really just, you're not overeating. You're getting exactly what you need and you get so satiated and full from these two because they're, they're filled with potatoes. So, and all whole ingredients. That's what I love about it. All right. So I got that there. Just gonna put this over here. All right. So then I'm just going to mix it up here. So you can see here in the bowl, I've got all four ingredients in here. It's the cup of oat flour, cup of mashed Japanese sweet potato, a fourth of a cup of plant milk, whatever plant milk that you have and then just using the date syrup. So super, super easy. Oh my gosh, and they look so good already. So now you said your clients, tell me about what you do with clients. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so I do a few different things with clients. So um, I know that you mentioned right earlier that I worked at True North Health Center. So I was there supervising water and juice fasting patients for about a year. And it was the best experience ever being surrounded by all the plant um, powered doctors and just, you know, food and all the patients that were just so motivated to get there and regain their health, right. Just through fasting and through eating the amazing food. So, um, what I do with my clients is I actually help them reduce their body's toxic burden through reducing environmental toxin exposure. That's found in a lot of the products that we're using that's found in, um, you know, the water that we're drinking and different things like that, but just basically helping regain their health through reducing some toxin exposure, eating better. I provide meal plans for 
um, all whole food plant-based, um, SOS free meal plans and, you know, incorporating like specific foods that they might need, like whether it's maybe I'm seeing they're deficient in some B vitamins or different things like that. So make sure we're incorporating more whole grains, leafy grains, different things like that, just stuff to help to, to support their gut, their liver, their kidneys and all that kind of stuff. So I incorporate that. And then I actually do incorporate fasting in it as well. So once I feel like patients are ready or my clients are ready for sort of that step. And if they're will, if they want to, we incorporate maybe like a two to three day fast just to kind of get some good benefits there. That really helps to support the gut and the liver and just kind of give the body a little bit of a break and a nice little detox. So yeah, so I do a lot of that. I do that all remote. So I work with patients um, pretty much all over. So all right. So here is the mixture. You can see, like, look how creamy it looks. It is Oh my gosh, this, this could actually be like a pancake too. You could turn this into anything. So, <laughs> um, all right. So what I do is I have the mixture there. So I use an ice cream scooper and I will just go in and use it. And then I'll just plop the different, um, the mixture here onto my baking sheet. And then I'm just going to bake it at three. I already have the oven set, but it's going to be baking at 375 for about eight to 10 ish minutes. I'll start at eight and then we'll just kind of go from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these on here real quick. And yeah. And then another thing that I do too, while we're on the topic is, um, I'm going to put this right here real quick is I am a chiropractor by training. So, um, and that's a lot of what I did at true North as well. I saw a lot of the patients that were, um, fasting, and I would treat them. So, you know, you get a lot of aches and pains when you're fasting. So getting a chiropractic adjustment is actually really, uh, really helpful. <laughs> you do that one technique you sent me for when I lived in the desert, that's effective, but really painful, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. So I was going to mention that too. Yeah. So it's called, um, active release technique. So it's basically helping to restore your body's function by removing scar tissue that has developed, um, over any muscles, tendons, ligaments, and nerves, and really helps to reduce your pain and restores proper movement. Because what basically occurs is, you know, over time, either through like maybe some sort of injury or just repetitive motion, such as, um, or here real quick, I'll show you guys. So here's the cookies right here. I'm actually going to flatten them down with my spoon and then I'm going to bake them. Um, so let's see, let's use the spoon here. So um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So, you know, a lot of the patients that I see, you know, it's a lot of them is just people that are sitting at a desk for, you know, they've been sitting at a desk doing a desk job for years and years and years. Right. And you're, you're basically, you're sitting, maybe not having really great posture and you start to develop scar tissue, which is basically dense fiber that is laying down in the opposite direction of muscle fiber. And what it does is it binds down onto whatever is in the area that might be getting that stress component. And so a lot of times I see a lot of patients for headaches, neck pain, back pain. Um, I worked on a lot of different nerves uh, because, you know, like sciatica, you know, you're sitting for long periods of time. The sciatic nerve runs through a lot of different muscles in the area. So I work on that as well. And just after a few sessions, you can usually restore a lot of movement and a lot of, and reduce a lot of pain just from that, um, from the technique. So I see patients in their home, uh, in the local Orange County, California area. So, um, and sometimes I've gone to North San Diego County. It really depends on, you know, how close they are because <laughs> I won't drive too, too far. Um, but yeah, I have a table and I just go treat patients in their home. Uh, let's see timer. Okay. So I'm just going to set this for about, you know, it looks a little, let's do 10 minutes. Let's start there. All right. So you have 10 minutes there. I'm just going to put this over here. Okay. All right. So, so far we've got the oat cookies that are baking right now for about 10 minutes. It looks like the, the French toast, they're starting to kind of brown up a little bit. So then we'll kind of go into the things that I like to top those with. But the last thing I'm going to actually show you guys is my personal favorite. It's the banana split. So, okay. All right. So like I said, baking the potatoes ahead of time and everything. I like to eat these, um, cold, actually I'm weird like that. I love cold potatoes, <laughs> but you could actually, after you've stuffed this with all the ingredients that I'm going to go over, you could actually probably put it in the oven. I haven't tried this yet and just bake it for, or even your air fryer and maybe bake it for like 10 minutes just to kind of get everything nice and warm. And maybe it'll kind of really taste like kind of like a warm banana split. I don't know. Um, I could imagine that's really delicious though, but so bake the potato. I slice it. 
uh, lengthwise, but I don't completely slice it all the way open because I want everything to be like nice and stuffed. And this is really just for aesthetic looks. Like, I mean, you know, it's going to taste the exact same. So, you know, if you don't want it to look all like super beautiful, I mean, it'll still look pretty, even if you cut it all the way open, but just for today's show, I didn't cut it fully open. So that way you can see here the inside. I kind of scooped out just a little bit of the inside as well. You don't have to do that, but I just scooped it so that way I can stuff it with all the goodies that I'm going to. So the ingredients that you need for this is obviously the medium Japanese sweet potato and then whatever fruit that you really love. So I'm going to be, it's a banana split. So I'm going to be using a nice ripe banana. I'm also going to be stuffing it with some different berries. I personally love blueberries and strawberries. And then I'm going to be using some date syrup as well. And then I'm going to be using my whipped cream, which I make from using plain yogurt and date syrup. And I'll explain that as I'm going to be topping it with it, but that's pretty much all you need. And then maybe some cinnamon just to top it with, but yeah, it's super, super good. Just because again, this, the sweet potatoes are just super sweet. So, okay. So we have the potato. So like I said, you just need a nice ripe banana here. So this one is super, super ripe. So I'm just going to open it up and I'm just going to slice it lengthwise and just grab a couple of pieces out and then I'm just going to stuff the potato with it. So let me open it up here. I'm going to stuff it in here. And I'm actually working on a recipe book. It's definitely a lot harder than, than I thought it would be <laughs> to do. I have a lot of time and effort that goes into it, but I'm actually kind of creating like a little like plant-based dessert recipe book that's SOS free just because I love baking and I love, and I think it's so fun seeing people's reactions to using sweet potatoes and date syrup and things that really sweeten everything up. So I'm actually working on that. And I'm hoping I can get that done by this, the end of this year. So maybe by the next time I come on, I'll be able to make some recipes from it too. That sounds great. Do you know what you're going to call the book? Nope, not yet. <laughs> still waiting, still waiting on it until it comes to me. Okay. So the, um, the air fryer just finished. Oh, the potatoes look so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up and yeah, so I'm just going to let those cool just for a little bit. And then I will show you guys, it'll be a little bit hot to grab first. So, okay. So here we go. Okay. So here, okay. So I just sliced a couple of different, uh, uh, sorry, a couple of different, um, just some bananas and I'm just going to stick them into the potato in here. I'm just going to do one more right through there. Okay. So right now it's hard to see, but I do have the bananas that are sticking inside the potato here. And then I'm going to be putting in a couple of different berries. So here is some blueberries and then some strawberries that I already cut up. These are my personal favorite berries, but you can use any fruit if you want or any berries or whatever you honestly love to put over your potato. But I'm just going to put some blueberries and I'm just gonna kind of stuff them in here, just like this. And then also going to put some strawberries in here as well. Just make it look nice and pretty. There we go. Maybe I'll just put a couple like kind of around there. Okay. So here we have the potato and we you can already kind of start to see the yummy color that's in there. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of cinnamon because I love cinnamon. So I have some cinnamon left here. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit over the potato here, just to kind of give it a little bit of that taste. I love that. And then I'm going to top it with a little bit of date syrup. So, um, you know, it really depends on how sweet you want it. This is already going to be pretty sweet. So I put it in the recipe in the show notes. I said, um, they use like two tablespoons to top it with. I'll just use probably about a tablespoon worth right now, just to kind of, um, keep it nice and simple, but yeah, so we have that in here. Okay. All right. So now on to my last favorite part of this is making the whipped cream. So it's kind of like a heavier whipped cream, but it's still super good. So what I do is obviously instead of buying whipped cream, 
is I take a plain um, plant-based yogurt. And so my favorite brand is Forager just because they don't really have a lot of like, oh, do you use that brand too? Yeah, I like the cashew. It's, it's, it's very good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's actually what I use. So I use that one and they have like different active cultures in there too. So you're getting the fermented benefit, which is fun. But, um, so I'll take about a fourth of a cup of that and I'll mix it with like a tablespoon or two of date syrup. Now, again, it really depends on how sweet you want it to be. Um, I do have a sweet tooth, so I will usually, this has, this has two tablespoons of date syrup in it. So I just mix that up and honestly it is so sweet and so good. And then you're just putting, I just pretty much layer it on top of the potato. That is such a great idea. I I make whipped cream out of pears, but I have yogurt. I could be doing that right now. That's very cool. Thank you. I've actually, I've used your, um, I love your whipped cream recipe. I've I've used, I've actually used that before as well. So yeah. So I just kind of put it on top here and honestly, I just put a little bit in there and then that's really it. Honestly, it is so easy and yeah, you can't really see all the fruit that's in it, but I just, it's just all stuffed in here. And I have the date syrup. I have the berries, the bananas, I have the, the plant-based yogurt in here and some cinnamon. And I just, just cut it up and just eat it with all the goodness in there. It is, it's seriously so sweet and so yummy. So you can eat that um, for breakfast. I was, yes, I was actually going to say that I have eaten this for breakfast. <laughs> I usually can't finish the whole thing sometimes. because I'm not super duper hungry in the morning, but honestly I could I, like for like a lunch or a dinner, I could easily like just eat this entire thing. So yeah, I love this. So yeah, so this is a really easy, easy recipe to do. Let me just check on the cookies really quick. Oh, they look great. Okay, so they have about two minutes left. I put it in for 10 minutes, so okay. All right, so next I'm going to take out the French toast that's in there. So the French toast recipe has pretty much the same ingredients as the uh, banana split one that I just showed you guys. So you can use a variety of fruits to top it with. I personally just like to use berries for this. I don't really use bananas in the recipe, but, uh, but you could, you know, add some bananas in if you, if you prefer, but I'll just top it with some berries, top it with the date syrup that I made and then some cinnamon. And yeah. And because you had roast, because you pretty much roasted it again, it has a little bit of like a crunchiness to it. Like it would like when you're making a French toast, which is really yummy. So I'm going to go ahead and just take them out of the air fryer because they're nice and good to go. And I'll show you guys kind of what they look like because they're much more like crunchy and they've browned up a bit. And just remember to, you only really need like 12-ish minutes in an air fryer. You don't really need that much. Um, okay. So here they are. They're nice and roasty and you can see they've kind of got a little bit of a brown tint to them now. So there's going to be nice and crunchy and good to go for the recipe. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to top it with some cinnamon and then some berries. And you could actually top it with some cinnamon prior to putting it into the air fryer too, if you want it to kind of stick more. But I, I bake a bunch of different things in my air fryer. So like tofu and other things. So I just don't want the cinnamon getting all over. But um, yeah, so I put some cinnamon on there. I'm just going to put some of the fresh berries that I was mentioning earlier that I personally like to use. So I'll just put some blueberries and strawberries in here. And then there we go. <laughs> I feel bad for people that cannot get these kind of potatoes. I don't understand why certain regions they're not available. Oh, I know. I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> you can order them though, right? Can you order? I think you can. I really do. Yeah. And I think you can grow them because I remember I brought them to Mexico at Rancho La Puerta and gave them to Salvador. And I, I think if somebody knows how they can definitely do that. And I've seen them available online and through these companies like Potato of the Month Club. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Because, oh, looks like these are ready now. Perfect. Okay. So the cookies are done. Um, yeah, no, I know. I don't know what I would do. I would be very, it would be sad to not be able to just go to your local grocery store and pick them up because I know these are available at almost all the grocery stores kind of around me, but it's good to know that you can, yeah, just go and, you know, order some online if you need to. Um, all right. So this is, I'm just topping it with a little bit of date syrup there. And then I just kind of, you could make the date syrup a little bit thinner too. I actually just like mine to be like kind of thick, but so, and then you can also honestly top it with whipped cream if you want it to be a little bit sweeter, but here's the recipe and they look so good. I can't wait to eat these later. I'm going to have so many potato dishes. <laughs> so good. Lissa says, I'm very intrigued by this recipe. All the yumminess of a banana split plus the potato. You know what I've done with mine is instead of putting fresh bananas, I've put banana ice cream in it. 
Oh my God. Oh, into the, the banana, into the potato. You know, I, air, what I do is I, I like to take it like you, I like to cook it first and I like to chill it because something seems to happen when you chill it and then eat it again. Like it makes it better. And I kind of smash it and I air fry it and then it becomes almost like toast and, and like oh. marshmallows. And then I put the banana ice cream on top of it. Then all the fruit. That sounds incredible. Incredible. But now you can do that for your birthday in a car. I honestly, that's actually probably what I'm going to do for my birthday. That sounds amazing. It's like next level. Let me tell you. That really is. And isn't it incredible? Like, I still am amazed that you can make things taste almost sweeter than what they would taste like when you buy them from the store that's full of all the cane sugar and all these like, you know, ingredients. And it's that the really chemicals like. too. It's not even just that it's sickly sweet, but it's the, there's this chemical smell and taste to commercial ice cream, even vegan ice cream that's almost nauseating. I actually completely agree. It was really fascinating when I was at True North Health Center and a lot of the patients that were fasting, even just fasting for, you know, you know, because the patients there, they're fasting up to 40 days, you know, not everyone's hitting that 40 day mark. I'd say average, it seemed like it was probably about like three weeks to a month. But, um, you know, we have patients that were going in for a fast five days and even just fasting for five days, your taste buds completely change. Like they do a complete like 180 and you just can go into the dining hall and eat the food. And like, it's amazing. Just like how the vegetables taste, or the food, the potatoes, everything tastes so much better. And like, you actually enjoy, you don't need any like sauce or salt or anything like that. Like you do prior to when you're, you know, fasting, you, you know, getting used to eating the standard American diet. So yeah. And that's why what I love about this too, is that when you've been eating this way, then you honestly just appreciate how sweet natural food is. So yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take out the, um, cookies that are done in here. And like I said, they all have such similar ingredients. So that's, what's really nice too. So probably, most people probably already have a lot of these ingredients. So, um, okay. So here's the cookies. So they are good to go. I'm going to just use a spatula and put them on a plate really quickly, but yeah, they're super nice. And they're like, what I love about these two is because since you're using the potato, they're, um, they're just like, they're not, you know, super flowery. So I feel like they're, they're more dense. So you're getting so much more out of it, so much more of a satiation factor from it. So that's what I like about these as well. I'm just going to go ahead and place these onto a plate. So I'll show you guys a little bit better with it. But, but yeah, and honestly, I mean, it's only been like 30 minutes and it took me, I can make three different recipes with these once the potatoes are already prepped. So super, super easy. Okay, I'm just gonna put these on here real quick. What, what do you think the difference is in your opinion between the Hanayan and the Japanese? I personally think that the Japanese sweet potato is a little bit sweeter. So that's why I, that's why they're my personal favorite. I, like I said earlier, I have a sweet tooth. So, um, being able to use potatoes and dates are up to like sweeten everything up is just like a win for me. And for a lot of my clients as well, because you know, we're, you get so used to eating, like you said, the chemicals and the sugar and all these things in the food that, um, it just helps to have something that can really sweeten everything up. Um, so that's what I think, but I still do use the Hannah yams like occasionally, but I, I personally like, but you like the Hannah yams better. Right? Well, 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 so like, I agree with you. So if I'm doing dessert, I think, yes, absolutely. The Japanese, but if I'm having it for lunch with broccoli, I don't want it all that sweet. So that's, I think why I prefer the Hannah if I'm having it as a more of a savory meal. Yeah. See, that makes, that makes a lot more sense. I, I completely agree with that. I still, I think I just love how sweet they are that for, for me, for like a lunch or a dinner, I'll still have the Japanese sweet. Well, no, I think they're great. And sometimes yeah. I put California balsamic in like glazed and habanero on them. I'll do like a spicy and a smoky sweet together. And I, I think it's fantastic. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. I know. Hey, and I you know, know, you could even drizzle a little California balsamic on your Sunday, like in a fruity flavor. I mean, you can really take next level, next level. Oh, you really, I know. Next level, next level. I love that. Yeah. You know, actually I, that's actually something I meant to grab out of my career. I have their, um, it's like the chocolate orange, like balsamic one or something. And I was like, oh, I should grab that and use that. So yeah, I had that and that would probably be amazing on this. Um, but here are the cookies. So you can see they are like nice and firm and good to go. And these took 10 minutes. So, I mean, it's like such a win-win. Like, you, I mean, you just have like this could be breakfast. This could be any meal of the day. <laughs> 
So here's the cookies. And then I'll just show you guys one more time what everything kind of looks like. And then here's the stuffed potato. And you know, you came, you told me about the ice, the nice cream, which is something I'm going to have to try next time. Cause that's amazing. And then you put the chocolate California balsamic once you put the oh my ice God. Cream. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. And then here's the, um, the French toast. So yeah, everything's here. I pretty much just used all the same ingredients. I think I gave you the recipe, so they should be. Yeah, yep, I put them in the show notes underneath the YouTube box. So if you're watching anywhere other than YouTube, you got to go to YouTube to see the show notes and the chat and the, everything that all the good stuff. So tell people how they can work with you, how they can follow you, interact with you. And t- tell us a little bit more about yourself, how you stay so healthy and vibrant. Uh, do you still swim at all? I know you used to, that used to be a big part of your life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I had a 16 year swimming career that ended at the, uh, 2016 Olympic trial. So I was actually third, um, and they take the top two Americans to the Olympics. Um, so, you know, at the time, obviously I was like, Oh my gosh, I missed the Olympic team, but it was honestly such a blessing in disguise because I don't think if I had kept swimming, I don't think I would have, well, maybe I would have found my way to what I do now, but it probably would, it would have taken a lot longer. And I'm so grateful for the journey because I'm here now and I get to work with so many clients. It led me to plant-based nutrition. It led me to, um, you know, getting my doctorate in chiropractic and then going to true North and getting all this experience and working with patients. And so, um, I'm really just, you know, getting to come on the chef AJ show and be able to make all these amazing desserts. (laughs) So, um, yeah. So anyways, my swimming career, I don't swim anymore. Um, mainly because the chlorine is just a little bit too harsh for me. I think 16 years was enough. Uh, it really dries out my skin and my hair and everything. I I have nothing against swimming and chlorine. It's just, I did it for so long, so I'm, I'm good to go, but I, um, I still go, I go surfing. I'm still, I live three minutes from the beach. So I'll go to the surfing beach here. Um, paddle boarding. I love, um, doing yoga and and things like that. So, um, I kind of keep a nice, I like to keep a nice active lifestyle. I get outside in nature a lot. So I go on hikes or walks or like, you know, go on the beach grounding and different things like that. So, um, but people can find me, um, on my Instagram, I'm super active on my Instagram. So the account name is it's at, um, W F P B underscore doctor. So it stands for whole food plant-based underscore doctor. And where you can type my name and Stephanie Peacock and I'll probably still come up. Um, but yeah, I'm super active on there. I'm always posting different recipes and different ways to, um, to elevate your life in any, you know, through food and through non-toxic switches and, um, lifestyle factors basically. So, um, super active on there. I also just started a YouTube channel about a month ago. It's called thrive kitchen. And, I've, I think I have about four videos up there right now, but I'm just also posting other ways that you could, um, incorporate different ways to elevate your health. So, um, yeah, I have about four videos on there as well. So thrive kitchen. So you can find me on there too. Um, especially if you're more active on YouTube, my website is www.stephaniepeacock.com. And like I said, I do virtual visits and I also do at home visits, but the home visits are just local to my area. So just Orange County, California. Um, but I have a free discovery call on there. So you can, you know, just select the time that works for you. And then you can call me and it's about a 15 minute chat and, um, let me know where you, where you are, you know, depending on what it is that you want to work on. So, um, yeah, so you can find me on there as well. And, um, yeah, I think that's about, uh, or if you wanted to just book a consult right away, I have it available there too, to be able to book a consult, but those are pretty much the, um, the three ways that you can probably get in contact with me. So (laughs) nice, nice. Well, thank you. Wow. I can't wait for your dessert book to come out. That sounds fabulous. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I'm loving it because it is so fun, like getting pictures of all the food and, um, just like just recipe testing because I'm pretty much just recipe testing with all the different delicious ingredients. I mean, I just use today. So I'm always having like a fridge stocked full of just like yummy treats. (laughs) A couple of questions from the live viewers. Diane says, where in Orange County do you live? I live in Dana Point. So it's like the southernmost tip, well, almost the southernmost tip of Orange County. San Clemente is the the most southern tip, but um, I'm like right north of San Clemente and in between San Clemente and Lagoon Beach. 
So nice. Uh, Susanna wants to know when you were a competitive swimmer, did your coaches push you to eat meat or protein supplements? Because her son in college is an athlete and she's finding this is what's happening with him. Yes. Yeah. So, and actually I'm so glad, glad that this got brought up because I forgot to mention this is another thing I do is that, um, because I, yes, my coaches did push that the, the way protein shakes, um, making sure you're getting animal protein at every meal, um, or some sort of, you know, protein that's very harmful to your health and just calories, 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 doesn't matter what you're eating, just as long as you're getting the food in. And so if they saw us even eating a Big Mac, they were like, good, good. You're getting your calories. In. And so, um, yes, that was pushed on me. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know that I, I didn't know about plant-based nutrition. I, I believed that, you know, I believe my coaches and believe I mean, it's very common in the athletic world to use animal protein as a way of um, recovering, which we know causes so much inflammation and can really hinder your recovery time. So a lot of what I actually do love to do is work with, I work with a lot of local athletes here and I've been starting to work with more virtual athletes too, but I work on basically um, making sure that you are getting in enough protein that you need, but through plants, you can get a, a, as much protein as you need through plants, through your tofu, your tempeh, your soy products. Um, not a big fan of seitan just because um, I don't, it's not really, um, I don't believe there's any organic wheat and a, a lot of people have a wheat sensitivity. So I don't really go there with it. And a lot of it's very processed. So I don't really use that, but there's so many ways you can get in plant protein and, um, and if you're really healthy and just making sure you're getting that, a nice balance of those macronutrients and micronutrients as well through the plant-based diet. But, um, but yes, yeah, so to answer the question long way about was yes, they did push that on me. And unfortunately it's just so common that everyone's doing it, but well, it must be hard for some athletes to stand up to their coaches if they're vegan or healthy. I know. I, I know. I completely agree because usually you're on a team of like 50 people. And if every single per, if all 49 people plus the coaches are, you know, eating that way and there's the one person that's not, it, it's hard when it comes to traveling and things like that. But I've managed to make it work a lot for my clients and just talk, talking with the coaches, letting them know like what they're trying to do. And, um, you know, actually it's, it's been pretty amazing at, at how, um, the coaches have been very open to it. And, um, you know, so anyways, yeah, it's really about just doing what's best for you though, in that moment. And if, um, and you really do see an incredible difference when it comes to your recovery time and, um, just like your training, like it really elevates everything. So it's something I wish I could have done when I was an athlete. So, uh, it's all good though. <laughs> Um, Linda says, maybe you could find a pool treated with hydrogen peroxide instead of chlorine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, or a saltwater pool. So, um, there, I know there's a couple here in Southern California. I haven't actually been to them. So again, I haven't swam in a while, but, um, but I do know that some people are, that there have, there have been some facilities that are my kind of leaning more towards that as well. So, uh, but yeah, but also to open water swimming, open water swimming is always an option. If you're not too afraid of the wildlife that's out there, you can get out there and do some swimming too. So <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, and Mona wants to know, are your YouTubes live at times? So I have, since I, I just started it, so I'm kind of still like figuring out, but yes, I do want to start doing YouTube lives. I do a good amount of Instagram lives as well. Um, just chatting with other plant-based individuals and different things on health topics, but, um, so I haven't gone live yet on YouTube, but I do plan on it. Nice. Alyssa says, have you had any coaches convert to whole food plant-based? Yes, I actually, I have one so far and I, I I'm very proud of it <laughs> because it's really hard, especially because as you know, like, you know, the older and the, you know, these coaches, they've been surrounded by this, uh, lifestyle for so long. And so it's a, usually a lot harder for, uh, coaches to transition over, but yes, I have. And I really think we're starting to see so many athletes are so open to transitioning that I really think we're going to start seeing more and more coaches transitioning as well. That'd be so cool. It. What's, what do you miss most about working at true North about not working at true North anymore? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I, I really miss, uh, oh gosh, it would be a mix between Ramsey's food <laughs> and, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I really enjoyed, uh, the, uh, all the doctors that were there, basically uh, all the practitioners, um, everyone just really being super passionate about a plant-based lifestyle and, 
um, I don't know, just everyone was just super positive there. And it was just really great. I made a lot of really great friends there. And I'm so I'm actually seeing quite a few of them next week, which I'm really excited to connect with all of them again. But um, yeah, I really do miss that. And then the patients were amazing too. I mean, all the patients, because they were so highly motivated. I know Alan Goldhammer will kind of discuss this, but by that point, a lot of people you know, have gone through so many different treatments, um, you know, things that may have been, that may have even worsened their, whatever condition it is that they're coming in with. And so, or they're on a lot of medications. And so by that point, the fasting is almost his last resort. So they are walking in and, you know, getting ready. They're just like, okay, like I'm ready. Not even sure if it's, you know, going to, because they've done so much all, already by that point. And, when they fast and they eat the food and they leave the, tr- the, the difference you see in there and how they look is like, it's like they're glowing by the end. And it's just so, it was just so incredible seeing those results like almost daily because the facility houses, I think now is housing up to 70 patients at a time. And so on um, the wait list, I think is now like six to seven months just to get in. So, I mean, it's constant flow of patients there. And so I just, I loved seeing, I loved seeing the results like that. That was just like really like fantastic going to check in on the patients every day. And, um, it was really great. So yeah, it's such a good experience. I'm so great. What, what was the most important thing you learned at true North in general, and maybe from Dr. Goldhammer specifically? Oh my gosh. Um, the most important thing that I learned there. Well, I was already plant-based by the time that I had that by the time that I had gone there. So, um, so I was really familiar a lot with how to, um, you know, create plant-based foods for individuals. Um, you know, I really have to say it was, it really was the fasting. Like it was, just learning the dip, like, for example, you know, someone that's coming in with an autoimmune condition needed a certain amount of time to fast versus somebody that's going in for diabetes or, um, or maybe just even like a quick, uh, fast just to kind of reboot. Like there's different set times that you're or set amount of times that you're supposed to be essentially fasting those individuals to really see the majority of the benefits. So that was really interesting learning, you know, when a patient came in, I, I, you know, the exact plan that we had to put them on. And then the other thing that was really interesting was just learning more and more about fasting because fasting is just, it's so fascinating, but, um, just learning about all the different benefits of it and how essentially 80% of our bodies, um, energy is used towards digesting food. So when you are eliminating that piece, you're, you're allowing your body to use hundred percent of its energy to healing, whatever condition it is or anything that you, um, came to true North to fast for. And so there's different things like that, just learning all about fasting. Cause it really is the, I mean, it is like the place to go <laughs> to learn about it. So yeah, it was fascinating. So you were already plant-based when you came to true North and Gina said, how were you first introduced to whole food plant-based eating and living? Yeah, it was actually a year into, um, my chiropractic schooling. So my schooling was almost four years. It was three and a half years. And so it was after the first year, um, it was actually funny enough. It was a good friend of mine at the time that I had no idea he was vegan. I, he never really talked about it. And, um, but he, him and I were just walking to class one day and he, he goes, I'll never forget this. He goes, um, did you know that diabetes is actually caused from an overload of saturated fat and inflammation in the body? Not all the sugar. And I mean, sugar definitely contributes, but not all the sugar in the thing in the carbohydrates and all these things that everyone wants us to believe. And I was like, I, I stopped him and I was like, what are you talking about? And so he's like, oh my gosh, he's like, and so he started just, you know, spitting out the research to me. And then I started looking into myself and I was like, oh my, I can't believe this. And so I think it wasn't that night, but it was the next day. I just came home from school and I told my husband, I was like, I was telling him all about it and he was really into it. And I was like, okay, like, let's just do it. Let's just go cold Turkey. We're going to do it. So we got a big box and we threw out everything that we had that had animal products in it. And so this was back in 2018. It was August of 2018. Um, that we went plant-based. And so, yeah, we just threw it all out and then we just figured it out. We, you know, we started, we, I didn't really know how to, I, I wasn't doing whole food plant-based at the time. I was like, okay, I just need to, I'm just going vegan. So I did some of the transition foods. I didn't really have anyone helping me, but, um, but after a little bit of time, you know, reading more and more reading, realizing whole food plant-based eating the whole foods and nothing but the whole foods. And then, um, now our dinner is really just look like kind of like similar to what you eat chef AJ, just like a great steamed potato or some beans or something with some, like a mixed veggie stir fry and I'm good to go. <laughs> so did you ever hear about a plant-based or a vegan diet before then? No, that, oh, actually one time, 
when I was, when I was swimming, I did hear about it. Um, I remember hearing there was this one, um, swimmer that she had made the Olympic team in 2012 and she, I had heard someone say, oh yeah, she's, she's only, she's eating a plant-based diet. Uh, I remember someone mentioning that to me and I, but I didn't really know what that meant. I was like, oh, okay. So anyways, after we went plant-based, I actually had thought about that and I was like, oh, so she, and I, 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 can't, I don't think she made, uh, or maybe she did. I think she did make the Olympic team again in 2016. Um, but anyways, at the time I didn't know that I, that was honestly the only time I had ever heard of it. I um, never heard of it before then. So all the swimmers, everyone around me was all eating animal protein. That was the norm. So, um, <laughs> Susanna says, do you recommend intermittent fasting like a 16, eight window? Yeah. So I, yeah, a lot of my um, patients will ask me about this and it's really individualized. So I think it's really dependent on how it makes you feel first of all. And so I know for me, I personally don't feel great when I do that long. So I do like to incorporate, I'm not super, super hungry at breakfast time, but I feel my best when I do have some calories in at breakfast. So for myself, I know that, okay, so I just feel a little bit better when I have a little bit of food. Intermittent fasting is absolutely amazing for you. So if you feel great doing it and you don't feel lightheaded, you don't feel like it's, um, you know, causing any conflicts like in your health or your energy and different things like that, I think it's completely worth it to try because we, what we see is with fasting for greater than 12 hours is you're seeing this amazing benefit where essentially your, it's called your migrating motor complex. And what that is, is it's something that comes in when you haven't been eating for greater than four hours. And it actually is like, it's almost the street sweeper of the gut. And so it comes in and actually sweeps the gut clean of any toxins, anything that's like in there. And so it just really allows to give your digestive system a rest too. And so we see amazing benefits with intermittent fasting. So I think it's great. I try to fast for at least 13 hours and then I'll eat breakfast. So, um, but if you feel great doing 16 hours, I think that's absolutely fantastic and that you should do that if it makes you feel good. Thanks. Uh, and that says, can you talk about adrenal gland fatigue and what to do about it? Oh, yes. So adrenal gland fatigue is, it's sort of, um, I think that that term has gotten thrown around a little bit too much and it's kind of, um, become a little bit over hyped, if you will. So your, your adrenal glands really, there is a condition that occurs when your adrenal glands actually do completely fatigue out. Um, but for the majority of people, they're not dealing with that and you can't really fully fatigue your adrenal glands. Um, what's potentially occurring is maybe they're just, um, because essentially your adrenal glands are constantly releasing different hormones. And so you're not actually fatiguing out the adrenal glands. There might be something along the area. That's like, um, like different glands along the way that are releasing hormones. And it might not be receiving the signal to release the different hormones that the adrenal glands do like your cortisol and different things like that but you're not actually pooping out your adrenal glands completely. And so what I always recommend, if you're thinking you're dealing with some sort of adrenal gland fatigue, I mean, what I do with my own patients, I go through a thorough history. I'm seeing what you're eating, how you're exercising, what's your stress level like? I mean, what are you cooking with? What are your, what's the water filter that you're using? I'm looking at a whole picture of my patient and I'm seeing, and usually I can kind of pick up on different things like throughout their life and stress. I mean, it's a big part too, that can really cause a lot of different fatigue symptoms, but I don't ever see that someone's usually dealing with some sort of adrenal gland fatigue. Usually a lot of times you just need to kind of work on one specific lifestyle area or, or a few different areas that might be contributing to why you might be feeling fatigue. Cause fatigue is one of those things that, I mean, there can be numerous things that might be contributing. So it's important to work with a practitioner that can kind of see like a whole well-rounded picture of what might be going on. So. Nice. How important do you think is SOS free? Cause that's the thing that that's so different about the way true North teaches health than pretty much every other, you know, vegan or whole food plant-based teaching. They're the only ones that really think that that's as important. I know. I know. So I think it's very important. So again, I do find, I will say that when it comes to my athletes, they do need to use a little bit of salt just sometimes, just because, you know, they are working out so, so much and constantly sweating. So I do find like a little bit of, I have a really great electrolyte supplement that I really like, um, or just, um, maybe sprinkling a little bit of salt, like over their food. Occasionally, I find that that's necessary, but for the majority, 
you know, eating SOS free, salt, oil, sugar free, the sugar absolutely needs to be cut out. That is just a known inflammation causing agent. So we got to get that out of the picture. And plus, like we just did here, you can use dates, you can use sweet potatoes, you can use bananas, berries. I mean, so many things to sweeten your food. So you don't even need to miss it. And then the oil as well, the oil, especially for people trying to lose weight, right? Oil is 120 calories per tablespoon. And you know, that is just the easiest thing to eliminate. And the thing is too, is no one's really using a tablespoon of oil. They think they are right when they're, you know, putting it over, they don't realize how much they're using, but you're probably using, I would guess to me like five tablespoons of oil. I mean, that is like a thousand calories right there. I mean, that is just so many calories that you're using. So that is what something I find the easiest thing to be able to eliminate, to be able to lose the weight. Right. And we know for a lot of, um, weight loss, right. That adipose, um, tissue that, adip- uh, that's in that basically centralized, right. That's what houses a lot of inflammation as well. So if we can find a way to reduce, um, your like caloric intake from, especially just something super easy, like, you know, the oil, and they can start to lose a little bit of weight. You actually start to release a lot of that inflammation anything that's being housed in there. Right. And you start to lose weight and feel better. And then everything, your arteries open up and your, your body just feels more alive. And so, um, yeah, eating salt, oil, sugar-free is really important. And then one more thing I'll say about the salt too, is that a lot of people are just over salting everything or eating processed foods that are just full of salt. And that really messes with your, um, with your taste buds. And then you can't taste food. It actually causes you to overeat too. So then there's another thing contributing to not being able to lose weight. You're actually overeating and then you're overeating most likely pretty calorically dense foods. And then adding in that oil, um, it's just easy, easy things that you can eliminate. And then you can really taste your food. You can really taste it. And it tastes so much better without all that extra ingredient. So, yeah. Well, p- until people do it and they get their palate clean, they don't know how good the food you made can actually taste. Right. Uh, there's a question from Deborah: excluding sugar, does that include maple syrup? So I would say yes. I will use maple syrup occasionally. I just prefer date syrup. But the reason why is because maple syrup also, it doesn't have any fiber in it. So it is an untapped natural source of, you know, sugar, but I think then it really depends on like where you are in your, and maybe what we call it a weight loss journey. So when it comes to maple syrup, it's very, very sweet. And I think you, you're not getting any of the fiber that's in there. So you're not getting that amazing benefit of being able to slow down the digestion process and slowly absorb the sugar. And so you know, that's what's so amazing about the date syrup, but with the maple syrup, it's pretty calorically dense and you're also, um, you're not getting any fiber in there. So you kind of, you know, for someone that might be dealing with some blood sugar issues, you are going to get a little bit of a spike in that blood sugar response. So, um, I personally take sort of, uh, sort of like, okay, like an individualistic stance on maple syrup, depending on different people. But I think, you know, if you can stick with using, you know, whole foods, that's just going to be your best bet because you're just going to feel way more satiated too when you're using them. Doesn't it take like 15 to 20 gallons of the sap that people can tap to make like one gallon of maple syrup? It's highly processed. I mean, it's not really a natural sugar, whereas dates, you can pick them off the tree and eat them and make it into a syrup or a paste. And same thing with bananas too, right? Like you can bananas, you can mash them up and just like make them into almost kind of like a paste and then, or like blend it. And then there's a, like an amazing natural sweetener too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, God, this was so fun. Thank you. I can't wait for you to come back when your dessert book is written or even before have a happy birthday in a couple of days. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. I, too bad. I, I should have come on my birthday, but I will come on. Maybe I'll come on next year on my birthday and then we'll do, I'll make, I'll make what you, I'll make my birthday cake using um, Japanese sweet potatoes or something. It'll be fun. <laughs> That'll be incredible. Thank you yeah. so much. And I hope everybody uh, checks out the show notes and follows you on Instagram and YouTube and uh, maybe even works with you if they have some goals that they're trying to reach. Yes. Thank you, Chef Adrian. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great to be on again and connect with you. I always love coming on your show. Oh, me too. It was so fun to see you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in two hours when my guest is Tracy Sloan, and we're going to continue this dessert theme today and make some truffles. Do you ever make truffles, Dr. Peacock? You know, I've actually, I haven't dived into truffles yet. I haven't made truffles. Have you made truffles before? Oh, sure. Oh my God. I've written a dessert cookbook. I love to make truffles. (laughs) I like things that are little bite-sized treats, you know? 
Yes, 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 yes. I haven't made truffles yet, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably die. I'll watch the show and I'll learn how to do it. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Take care, Dr. Pika.